Right, just going to go down. If you watched a couple of the videos before, um, I put a squirrel feeder up. It's been up there over two weeks, so I'm going to shoot down here now. Go and check it. I've got the catapult with me. See if we can see anything on the way. Also check the footage what's on the, the trial camera, what's near the feeder. See if anything's been feeding off of it. Oh, that smells nice. Jesus. And yeah, get by the smell of shit and see if anything's been feeding. Hopefully if we see anything, see if we can bowl one over. Oh my God. Stink of ass. It smells like ass. This full place. They must have spread shit over the fields. It smells like fat person's sweaty ass. And I know what that smells like because I'm fat. <laughs> Hello, two pheasants, two pheasants, enemy in sight. There they be. Enemies. Enemies of the state. Look like little hen pheasants. Two stags. long legs there they are look all ready for the season look at these oh if it was a hungry man they'd be dead i tell them now hello boys boys and girls well now oh my god some smell like that in my life a friend of my dad used to come and visit him Whenever he used to sit on the seat, my mum had to clean the seat when he left. That's what his arse smelled like. So the plan of action, there's two ways to get to where the feeder is. One is through there, through the thick. Or we can scoot round here where I seem to get more luck. So out into this field, down the footpath down there round the back of these trees and it's the back end corner where we need to be and there's always pigeons sitting up and down in these trees and and whatnot so we've always got a chance of nobbling something over there on the way in so that's going to be my plan so all of these this is the hedgerow down so when we're walking down here and into the into the left here all this hedge all the way down is full of pigeons jumping up there every two seconds they're always there so we'll have a little walk about and see if we can uh, see anything. Then we're going we're to make our way right down into the corner of this, then back into the woods, and that's where the scroll feeder is. So, shot placement on here, 8.5 steel straight on the top of the head there, took it straight out, nice clean kill, second one straight through the crop, 8.5 steel and that just was enough to secure the job. So to prep these two pigeons we're going to be using the Husk Japanese Blade, it's made of high quality Japanese steel, one of the key features with this knife is it has a 38 degree black blade. Its length is 28 centimeters and it only weighs 252 grams. The second that you get this blade out the box, it's precision sharp. The manufacturers will guarantee that it'll stay sharp for years. If you're not happy with it within 30 days, they'll give you a full refund. And they're currently offering 50% discount to all my viewers. So you can check that in the link below and in the comment section. It's got a nice grip hole, so when you're cutting with a knife, you've got less risk of injuring yourself or slipping with the blade. Because of how sharp it is, you don't need to put so much pressure on it. 
Now what they've done when they designed this knife, they've done it with a bushcraft hiker in mind. You know nature is so unpredictable. And every bushcrafter, hiker or a hunter, you don't really know where you're going to find yourself tomorrow. However, having a husk knife in your backpack and in your armoury means that you're going to go prepared. We've debreasted the pigeons. Nice and clean. See, one of the main things that I love about shooting with a catapult is if you shoot with a shotgun or anything like that, you've got to make sure that there's no pieces of lead or shots that's anywhere in the meat. You've got to pick them out. Obviously, with a catapult, it's clean edge shots. So everything's going directly to the head. You've got no worry about any of the meat being having any shots in or cleaning the meat out afterwards. It's all nice and nice and ready. <clears throat> all right, we've got some ground ginger. So you want a nice decent spoon of that. Ground cumin. Spoon of that. Paprika. One and a half. And Greek yogurt. Put a nice dollop of that in. And give this a nice mix up. And then cover them over. Make sure you've got plenty on there. Mix them all up. Nice and thick. And that's going to give a nice tandoori flavour and like a, hopefully like a charcoal to it as well. Right, take them off now and let them sit for five minutes because they only need to be done two minutes per side. Just let them rest for five minutes. Take them off. Look at that. That charcoal taste, the grill that's on there, that's what you want. Just let them sit for five minutes. Let your pan warm. Bit of oil in there. Let that heat up. A bit of butter. Butter. See, if you put your oil in first, then your butter afterwards, the butter won't just melt straight away. It'll keep its flavour. We want this some bread. A little cup. Give it a little twist on there. Want this shape. Oh, it's a good smell. You can smell the butter coming right through them. been standing for five minutes it's still nice and hot it's still nice and pink on there in the middle which is what we want
Don't be afraid of any pink in the middle there. It's game meat. And these are supposed to have a bit of blood in because of... If you overcook them, they will taste like livers. If you like livers, it's nice, but I don't really particularly like it. So I like mine with a little bit of pink in it, and they're absolutely perfect. And then what I want you to do... What I want you to do, guys... Guys... Some mango there, look. A little dollop of mango at the side. And then a wee pinch of... Canato. Right. I'm not normally one that likes to sit and eat in front of the camera. I don't I cringe when I watch it back. So I had done another pigeon recipe before and it was like a cranberry sauce in it. It's on one of my other videos and it was not, listen, it's real nice. But that, as far as a bit of pigeon goes, if it, as a starter or a light bit of dinner, you, that was as good as taste as you'll get for a bit of pigeon, honestly. Just please try it and if you try it, message me Comment on this video, come back to this video, comment on it, let me know what you think, because I'll be interested. But that, honestly, that was handsome. That was a good taste. And on that note, I want to say thank you again for watching. Thanks for tuning in regularly. And I'll see you next time. So, yeah, plenty more to come. This winter, we've got plenty to come. I'm drinking now. I'm seven months without beer. Not that I was an alcoholic, but I've got more to do with my time than sit in a pub and drink. And a man's got to have an hobby, and this is mine. So this winter you're going to see plenty of videos where sometimes I wake up and I think, oh, I've got a hangover, I was dying all weekend. I ain't got nothing better to do with me time if I'm not taking me family off. So you're going to see plenty of videos. So chuck us a thumbs up on the video if you don't mind. And yeah, have a good week, and I'll see you next time. And if you don't like the video, you like Corey.